This is the Red Dragon K618 low profile mechanical gaming keyboard. This thing comes with red linear switches and three different connection options. So you've got Bluetooth, 2.4 gigahertz wireless and a wired USB-C connection. It's currently selling for around 75 US dollars and at that price, it actually sounds pretty good. When I first got my review sample of this keyboard, I was taking a look at the box and noticed that it says it comes with an aluminum faceplate. And I thought that was pretty cool because at this price point, not all keyboards have aluminum faceplates. But as soon as I got my hands on it, I was like, are we sure this is actually aluminum? I mean, it does have a slightly different feel than the plastic material that's at the base or underneath, but in terms of aluminum faceplates, this is one of the lower end ones that I've seen. There's no brushed finish. Um, it doesn't feel particularly high end or premium. And at the same time, there's still quite a bit of flexibility in the frame of the keyboard, which you, you know, it's something that you don't normally see when you've got a metal or aluminum faceplate on there. But before we cast too much doubt on the overall design and rigidness of the board, I think we have to take into consideration the fact that this is so low profile. It's just so thin that there's not a lot of material that they had to work with here when they were designing this. So I think a little bit of flexibility in the frame is kind of inevitable with this kind of a design. At its thickest point, it's around 17 millimeters, not including the keycaps, and around 22 or 23 millimeters with the keycaps included. So it's really thin. The first low profile keyboard that I ever got my hands on was the Rocket Vulcan 121 AMO. And I absolutely fell in love with it. And to this day, it's still one of my favorite keyboards of all time that I've ever tested. Now this K618, it takes that low profile idea and shifts it like 10 steps further. It's super low profile, super thin, and I think it looks and feels amazing. Being so thin, it basically eliminates the need for any type of wrist rest. I think it's the perfect height to type and to game on in complete comfort. Now, if you do find yourself wanting to raise things up a little bit, you do have one level of tilt adjustable feet down there on the bottom that you can flip out and deploy. But for some reason, when you do that, the keyboard gets super slippery and moves around easily. So if you plan on playing with those feet flipped out, I would recommend adding your own grip tape or at least something sticky down there to keep it in place. There's a lot of different buttons and functions built right into the K618. If we start looking at the upper right hand corner over here, we've got some dedicated multimedia controls, which is amazing. I absolutely love having these kind of controls built right into my keyboards. It's one of the reasons I always use full size keyboards because you don't tend to get that stuff with some of the smaller, more compact designs. So we've got our play, pause buttons, skip ahead and back, and we got this nice volume scroller as well. So you can easily adjust your volume on the fly. Really nice to have on your keyboard. Now what's cool about this is it also doubles as a backlight control. So if I toggle this button on, when that's lit up, I can now bring my backlight levels down or all the way up in brightness. So really quick and easy way to adjust your backlighting. If I toggle that off, then I go back to just controlling my volume. We've got four macro profile buttons on here, number one, two, three, and four, and then we've got a macro record button right at the end of those. And what's cool about these is each one of these four profiles supports five different macro keys that are actually called G keys over here. So G1, two, three, four, and five. So each one of these profiles can have five different macros recorded over here with the G keys. So that gives you a total of 20 macros that are programmable on this keyboard, which I think is way more than anyone would ever need. But I mean, to be fair, I'm not somebody that uses a lot of macros. So hey, if you use a billion macros, let us know in the comments. But this one comes with 20 and I think that's more than enough. So you can have like different profiles for different games all set up and quickly toggle between them without having to go into settings or into software to change anything. It's all right there, right at your fingertips, right on the keyboard. Now, because this is a low profile keyboard, the keycaps on here are basically custom is the way I look at it. Um, and that basically means you can't just go out to the store or you can't just go shopping online for an additional set of keycaps or something completely different if you weren't happy with these ones. What you get here, what ships with the board is basically what you're stuck with because nobody makes a replacement kit for this board, not even Red Dragon, at least right now anyway. It would be nice if there were some options down the line, but for right now, what you get on here, what it ships with is what you're gonna be stuck with. And they're just your basic everyday ABS plastic keycaps. Very plain, very minimal, nothing special, nothing fancy. But one good thing is all of the longer keys, so like your spacebar, enter keys, um, your zero key down here, they're all stabilized. So it doesn't matter where you press on the key, you get a nice smooth linear press every single time. 
The switches on here are low profile linear red, so no tactile bump, no audible click sounds or anything like that. Nice clean keystrokes, linear response all the way down to the bottom and back up. And they feel pretty good. The actuation force feels low, very easy to press, very smooth keystrokes. And you know what? They're pretty quiet for mechanical switches as well. Let's get the microphone down here and get a detailed sound test so you can really hear what's going on. The board supports up to three Bluetooth devices at once, 2.4 gigahertz wireless with a USB dongle, and a wired connection using a USB-C to USB-A cable that does come with the keyboard, so you don't need to find your own cable. So the way you switch between these different modes is actually just using some key combinations on the board. So you activate the function layer, and then you either use one, two, three, four, or five. So you've got Bluetooth one, two, and three, 2.4 G on number four, and USB wired mode on number five. So for example, if we want to activate 2.4G wireless, we got to make sure we plug in the USB dongle into a USB port, and then we come over here, flick the switch on the side to the on position, and then press function plus four, and that will switch us into 2.4 gigahertz mode. It's really that simple. The 2.4 gigahertz wireless connection was actually really good. It was totally reliable and completely lag free in all of my testing. So I had no issues with it whatsoever. And that's exactly how it should be. If you're gonna use a keyboard wirelessly, then there better not be any lag. Now, when it comes to Bluetooth, I mean, Bluetooth, in my opinion, is perfectly fine for office tasks and, you know, I guess non-competitive gaming, but there's always some kind of uh, latency, a little bit of lag there with a Bluetooth connection. It's designed for mobile, so it really prioritizes battery life over raw speed and performance. So stick to that 2.4 gigahertz wireless connection unless you really need the extra battery life then, and only then would I go over to Bluetooth. But for office tasks, for typing, for messaging, whatever else you're doing on your computer, Bluetooth's usually just fine. Up in the top right corner, right next to the volume control wheel, we've got this little LED indicator. And that's actually what gives you an idea of what your battery levels are at. So if you glance down at that and you see flashing red, that means your battery is about to die and you need to plug in that USB cable like right away. I have no idea how much time you actually have left. There's no percentage that it indicates to you. There's no time increments like, hey, you got five minutes left. I couldn't find any info in the manual or online anywhere. So all I know is if that starts flashing red, plug in the keyboard as quickly as you can so that you don't lose any power or you know lose your game basically. And what's interesting about this LED indicator system is that you're looking for a different color light depending on what mode you're in when you're charging the keyboard, if that makes any sense. So if you're in 2.4 gigahertz mode, for example, then when the keyboard's fully charged, that LED indicator will, will turn green. But if you're in Bluetooth mode, then it'll turn like a cyan or magenta. And if you just have it plugged in and you're using it wired and the battery charges up, it's gonna turn white to let you know it's fully charged. I'm not sure why it's a different color for every single mode, but anyways, you gotta keep those colors in mind so that you know when your battery's fully charged. In terms of battery life, you can apparently get up to 30 hours on a single charge, but I couldn't find any information about what mode that's in. Is it Bluetooth? Is it 2.4 gigahertz wireless? And does that include backlighting? And at what level? Full brightness, half brightness, no backlighting, I really have no idea. But what I can do is share with you my experience with it over the last week. So I've been using it as my main keyboard for everything, and um, I never had the battery die on me, not once during any gaming session, during anything that I was doing. So I would plug this thing in overnight, every single night, and then use it throughout the entire day in the 2.4 gigahertz wireless mode, which will drain more battery than Bluetooth on any device, and um, it never died on me. So as long as you're charging it in between gaming sessions, or whatever you're doing, then I think you're gonna be just fine for like all day long use. Now let's talk pros and cons. On the pros side, we've got a nice looking, slim, low profile mechanical gaming keyboard. It's comfortable to use. It's got fast linear red switches that are also quiet, which is a nice bonus. There's tons of different connection options and it's got dedicated multimedia controls. 
Now on the negative side, we've got a build quality that in my opinion, could be a little bit better. It's a little bit on the flimsy side. I would have liked a little bit more solid build. These macro keys up at the top also, very mushy. They're like these rubbery feeling, almost like a calculator button. Doesn't give me like good premium vibes at all. <laughs> I would have liked to have seen better dedicated keys up there for that stuff. And finally, we've got the fact that you can't really swap out these keycaps. We've got basic plastic ABS keycaps, which in my opinion are actually fine, but good luck finding new ones if they wear out or if you just don't like them and wanted to switch to something else. Because I don't think you're gonna find anybody that makes a kit for this keyboard not now, maybe not ever. So definitely keep that in mind. You gotta like what you're getting here because you're probably gonna be stuck with it. So if you like the idea of a low profile gaming keyboard and you can take advantage of all those different connection options, then I do think that this one is a good choice at 75 US dollars. I personally have been using it for around a week now at the time of this recording for everything, for typing, for video editing, for hardcore gaming sessions, all that stuff, and it never let me down. It's solid and just fun to use all the time. So I'm gonna have the purchasing links and more information and specs about the keyboard down in the description of this video. Make sure you check that stuff out and hit the subscribe button and give the video a thumbs up on your way out and we'll see you soon.